numerical modeling of real life experiments saves time and money. In this presentation, I'm going to show you numerical modeling of steel end plate bolted beam to column joints using abacus. I presented this topic at an international conference in South Africa back in 2022 and here I'm going to share my experience uh, with you. So let's dive into today's presentation. This is how my today's presentation is organized. First, I will give some background to the work. Second, I will give brief description of experimental work that is modeled in this study. Uh, third, I will talk about finite element uh, model where I will include boundary conditions, load application and how I extracted the results. And finally, I will draw up some conclusions from this research work. First, I want to give some background to the work. What are simple and moment resisting joints? As much as 50% of the cost of the frame comes from joints. And standard connections reduce the cost of the joints. In industry, most of the time, standard connections are preferred. Fabricators normally design connections and joints and they require repeated components and standard components. Joints between members are of two types, simple and moment or fixed joints. Joints in simple frames are assumed to be nominally pinned and in moment frames fully rigid or fixed. Simple frames transfer shear only and stability is provided by a bracing. Simple joints allow rotation between members. On the other hand, moment or fixed frames they transfer both shear and moment and stability is provided by fixity or rigidity of the joints in theory no rotation to, should take place between members in moment resisting frames however in real life most frames show some form of moment and rotation resulting in semi-rigid behavior and this is what is my topic today. I'm going to model joints with semi-rigid behavior today and we will classify the joints as per Euro code 3 as well to see that if the joints are rigid, semi-rigid or pinned or simple. This is the joint detailing for first experiment that we used for validation. The way we carried out numerical modeling is first we validated the model against a set of experiments uh, then we moved on to carry out some parametric study this is the full depth of our flush and plate joint uh, testing done by da silva and the reference is given over here heb 240 column uh, 240 by 240 by 85 kg per meter where thickness of flange is uh, 7 and thickness of web is 10 millimeter and beam is ieb 240 or we can say 240 by 240 by 31 kg per meter where thickness of flange is 9.8 millimeter and thickness of web is 6.2 millimeter. M20 grade 10.9 bolts were used. Thickness of steel plates is 15 millimeter and S275 steel was used for all members. This is the joint detailing for the second experiment which is related to extended end plate joint the testing was conducted by da lima and the reference is given over here again the column size is 240 by 240 by 85 and the beam size is the same 240 by 120 by 31 the only difference here is that the plates are extended end plates not the flush end plates in the same way, M20 10.9 bolts are used. Thickness of a steel plate is 15 millimeter. S275 steel is used for all members. This is the detail of finite element uh, model for flush and extended end plate joints. Solid brick elements were used in uh, Abacus. Mesh sensitivity analysis was also carried out and the mesh size was chosen based on the compromise between computational efficiency and reasonable accuracy. Further details about these are given in the full paper and I'll put the link down below in description. Now, what were the boundary conditions and load applications? The column is fixed at both ends. The beam is loaded at the end by applying a deflection and then measuring the reaction at the end. 
bolt torque is applied to bring the connecting surfaces together because we did not have much information from the experiment so that's why we just apply the bolt torque to bring the contacting surfaces close to each other general contact is used to define contact interactions the penalty frictional formulation with a coefficient of friction of 0.3 was used to define tangential behavior and the default hard contact pressure over closure is used to define normal behavior the material properties used for validations were elastic plastic which means that we will define young's modulus and then it will go into a straight line and that will be the yield point it will not have the ultimate point where it will go down so we'll define the materials until yield point only and all engineering nominal stress strain values were converted to true stress strain values this slide shows the comparison between finite element modeling and experiments moment rotation of joints is compared here dashed lines show experimental results and solid lines show finite element modeling the graph of flesh and plate indicates a very close correlation between the experiment and the fe model for extended end depth plate the fe model graph is stiffer than experiment and the reason is uh, unknown maybe it is more bolt torque maybe it is slightly different material properties the moment capacity shows a close match for extended end depth as well the reason for this discrepancy is very difficult to establish as i mentioned earlier it can be bolt torque it can be different friction or it uh, it can be different bolt clearance as well now this is quite interesting the failure modes exactly compared to the experiments and this was very exciting for us for flush end plates, the bending of the end plate can be seen at the top of the beam and the bottom of the beam which is encircled here in this slide. And for extended end plate, you can see a slight buckling in the plate at the top and bottom corners of the flanges of the beam. Now it is time for parametric study where we use partial, full and extended depth joints. First joint is IPE to HEB joints. Second is PFC to SHS joints and joint detailing is as per Eurocode 3. Moment rotation behavior of these different two types of joints IPE to HEB and PFC to SHS are shown over here. The solid line here is for extended end depth plate the joint dotted is for flush plate joint dashed line is for partial depth joint then we carried out the joint classification as per euro code 3 on the left side you can see ip and heb beam to column joints and there are three limits one is for euro code 3 rigid joints euro code 3 pinned joints and the joints beyond rigid limit will be classified as rigid joints between rigid and pin would be semi-rigid and joints below pin joints will be simple joints so here you can see full depth and extended depth plate joints are classified as semi-rigid and partial depth end plate joint is classified as simple joints for ip heb beam to column joints on the other hand for pfc to SHS beam to column joints all joints extended full depth and partial depth joints are classified as pin joints this is quite understandable because when you have a channel section attached with the plate and then it is attached with the beam the chances are that it is going to rotate quite a lot because the section itself the parallel flange section is not symmetrical and due to asymmetry of uh, this section you can see all joints are classified as simple or pinned now it brings me to uh, conclusions but before i conclude i would like to draw upon few shortcomings of this research uh, in this research we used elastic plastic models which means that we could run the models forever and they will take load and it is very difficult to establish maximum load the way we established the maximum loading was looking at the stress contour plots and we will say that if the stress is reached to s275 then member or joint would have uh, failed but in uh, reality the ductile damage 
steel models should be used but because we couldn't find properties quickly enough to to put it in the model and this is something that we will consider for our uh, future research so anyone doing this research should consider these options of different way of doing the things to get results exactly as you would uh, get it in experiments and that will be really more realistic way of modeling these kind of joints finite element modeling results match really very closely with experiments in this research and moment rotation response and failure modes were compared between fe and uh, experiments extended end plate joints took more moment than other joints which was, which was quite understandable ipe and heb extended and flush end joints were classified as semi rigid ipe heb partial depth joints on the other hand were classified as pin joints all pfc and shs joints were classified as pin uh, this is some of the ongoing work which our group is carrying out uh, that is fe modeling of frp beam to column joints I, I conducted this research when i was working at university of warwick and i have the experimental data and some of my students are uh, conducting this research and they are looking into the failure modeling the damage modeling of fiber reinforced polymer uh, structures and they are trying to use the haitian criteria model in abacus and we will see how it goes and i'll update you when i'll get some results these are some of the references that we used for this modeling and the validation papers are here as well thanks for your time today uh, if uh, i was in a real uh, presentation i asked them to ask me uh, questions and it was really well received and uh, many people asked uh, questions as well uh, but feel free to put comments down below ask questions i'll be happy to respond uh, a recent paper on steel concrete composite beams uh, not recent at that time it was recent uh, in steel composite structures please feel free to have a look at it my contact details are uh, here and the copy of presentation is available at bit.ly slash semc 2022-jq feel free to have a look at the presentation and you can get in touch with me on linkedin twitter the details are here Thank you so much for watching this presentation today and hopefully I will see you in my next conference presentation if I happen to go anywhere. Thanks a lot. What is FRP? FRP is a material where we use carbon or glass fibers embedded in resin matrix. The resulting shapes resemble steel structures. The main driver for using these FRP materials is corrosion, resistance and lightweight.